they stop to drift away like a flowing river run away hey right, so it's another lovely sunny day in glasgow and i'm here with tommy all uh, we're going to talk about the john martin story for the previous facebook interview <laughs> it required an in-depth coverage that's right this is a john martin story this is a let the cat play story um we need to lay down some sand first. I was living in the uh, South Sea at the time, just outside Portsmouth. But I'm jumping the gun here. Um, I used to live in Mulgai, and next door was a woman and her son. It was Jean Robertson and Johnny Robertson. So, uh, <coughs> as far as I can remember, I was in South Sea at about 73. Came back to Glasgow and in 75 I got a house in Mulgai. 75, so sometime after that, I seen Johnny, who was, oh, I don't know, <coughs> probably about 20, early 20s at the time, and he uh, came by with a guitar on his back, right? I'd never known him to play a guitar. So I said, oh, what is she on the guitar? He says, I was out cutting the grass at the time, actually. So he says, aye, he says, uh, everybody else is up my go. He says, so I'm doing it as well. I says, aye, good on you. He says, my hero is John Martin. I said, uh, what ran into John Martin? He says, when I was living in England. I said, it's quite a story. He says, aye, give us that, you know? So, but this is the John Martin story, as I told it to Johnny Robertson, you know? So, uh, I was, as I say, I was living in South Sea, and then a Sunday night in Portsmouth at a, a place called the Centre Hotel. And a lot of big names played in here on a Sunday night. I saw Jake Thackeray there, the gifted wordsmith, and I uh, saw Long John Baldry when he had long hair, acoustic guitar, where he was a pop singer. That uh, might be an after he was a pop singer, I don't know. So, uh, I mean, he was backed up by a guy called Sammy Mitchell, a slight guitar player, who I thought was American. But as it turns out, he, he came to, uh, he was born in Liverpool actually. Never, I, didn't, I never heard him speaking, you know. So, uh, and here's a strange thing. When Stephen Grossman made the, the How You Play Guitar, Blues Guitar, Volume 2, he had Joanne Kelly, female singer, Mike Cooper singing the male parts, Sammy Mitchell playing sliding guitar, and all three of them came from England, right? Sammy Mitchell was born in Liverpool, and uh, Mike Cooper, Cooper came from Birmingham, England, and uh, Joanne Kelly was born in Streatham. And uh, that's quite strange. He was making a how to play blues guitar and blues singers and they were all English. Um, Stephen Grossman, I played uh, support to him once in, uh, in Glasgow. He was kind of quite inflated, you know, quite, you know, but it was something, you know. So, uh, as people say, Stephen Grossman, he's like a machine playing a guitar, there's no, there's no, no depth yet, you know, it's just like, you know, a machine playing a guitar. So, uh, and the music books, very neat, neat, neat soul, you know. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, to get back to the thing, I was living with uh, my ex-wife at the time in, in Portsmouth and by... Uh, there's a big name every week, but also had a lot of draws filling the space, filling up the time, right? And I, and I'm always, I was always saying to her, listen to that guy, he's 
the rubbish. I said, that could, that could be much better than that, you know. She says, such a good fellow me, and then you go and see the guy that runs it. Now, this is very, very unusual for me, because I, I never ever push myself forward, especially to play on a stage in front of people, you know. But I felt so incensed that I approached this guy. Dave East, I think his name was. And I said to him, you know, what's the thing I get a chance of get a, a support slot here? Oh, she says, oh no, sorry, she says, I say, we're about six weeks ahead, always here in the centre of the hotel, you know, a long, long time for you, if I reach that. She says, but, she says, if you want to play somewhere, she says, here's a place to go, and this is a place called, well, the actual place, the locale was a place called Haven't, and the uh, name of the pub was the Black Dog, and the name of the lounge was the Jugger Punch, for the front cruise, that's me. Top of the list here, you know. But I was very surprised. So I did actually go to this place. And it was a little more guy, it was the last, uh, it was like a, a terminus for the train. Which means the last train out of there at night, you had to be on that train. They had to stop the show, get on that train and go as you were stranded there. So, uh, so I went there and I was surprised, and as much as the posters are around the wall, everybody who's anybody in the folk world had been here at this place and played at this place, you know. So that was okay. So I did, went up a couple of times and the guy that ran that place thought, oh, he, he thought it was really good because he was a big Donovan fan, you know. And I was playing a lot of Dill and a lot of Donovan that time. So it was fine. So then the next thing, John Martin. Poster comes up. He's going to be playing at this place, the Juggle Punch, on his way through to the next big city. So I thought, We'll go along and see that, but we're skint, you know. So I says to her, I says, I'll take the guitar and I'll kid on, I'm going to be playing. And then we'll stick the guitar in the dressing room and uh, we'll go in for nothing. So I did that. But the guy clocked me, right, coming in. Oh, she's oh, there, I'll, I'll get your name down and get your slot and all that, you know. So uh, I says, OK, fair enough. At least we're going to get in and see you. So we did that. So I'm sitting in the thing and waiting and, uh, and I said to her, I'll go in and tune the guitar up in case I've got to go in and play. So I went in the dressing room and the place is mobbed. Absolutely stowed, you know, because everybody wanted to play a slot so that we can say I played in the same bill as John Martin, right? And that, that wasn't my intention at all. I didn't even want to play, I was just quite happy to go and see him for nothing, you know. So anyway, uh, so the dressing room's absolutely mobbed. So I'm sitting in the wee corner here, tuning my guitar up. And there's all sorts of people all playing banjos and fiddles all around and singing. Doing their whole set in the dressing room, you know. So, uh, And so eventually I'm tuning up to, and then I suddenly, so I start playing a couple of it and I suddenly realise the whole place is deathly silent, you know. And then this parted. And it was, I looked up and he was in the far, far away corner with his entourage, all the hangers on and all that, you know, so. Uh, and I was playing and he said, he says, oh, I haven't heard that song for quite some time. I think it was, a song called Blues Run the Game, and the guy that taught that to me was a guy called Alan Tall, who is a very gifted guitar player. And uh, apparently, John Martin had went to London to rent a record deal, so he recorded his first album of London Conversation. And as far as the story goes, he recorded it in one of his pal's kitchens for the sound on an old Reebok, real to real. And he took that well mm -hmm. to London to try and get a record deal. And he did, he got signed up with Chris Blackwell at Island Records, the first white man to do so. And uh, so Alan Tall, he had just recorded an album and he was going to try his luck as well. But then he in London, he had nowhere to stay, right? So uh, he contacted John Martin Well, to backtrack a wee bit, 
there's a place called the, uh, the Glasgow Folk Centre in Montrose Street, just around the corner for George Square. And uh, that's where all oh, the incredible string band and the uh, other Ropians played there. Alan Tall, John Martin, I saw a guy called Derek Brimstone in there once. All the top, all the top names and guitar players, you know, played in this place. And Alan Tall and John Martin both played in there on a regular basis and they didn't go on at all because uh, of an intense rivalry. So, to go back to the story, I was playing blues on the game and she hadn't heard that for a while. And she said, a, a good friend of yours taught that to me. She said, oh, who is that? I said, I'm on top. She said, I hate that. I said, I know, I know. So I, I played a few things. I played cocaine, you know. He says, well, I, I know that one, you know. It's a, it was his version, you know. And uh, so I played a few numbers and he played back up guitar, which is very nice, you know. So uh, he asked me, he said, do you write your own stuff? I said, no. I said, well, uh, I said, it's easier copying people like you. He says, oh, I should write your own stuff. He says, because I know you can do it, you know. And he was right. Because <laughs> 15 years later, I started writing my own stuff, you know. So, all these people must have gotten played. All these people wanted to play a support slots. And he must have played. Because the next thing I remember, I was back in the dressing room. And the guy that was running the place. Come up and said, they all oh, bad news. He says, can he fit you in? I wouldn't be too, <laughs> I wouldn't be too perturbed about that at all, you know. He said, can he fit you in? You know, he says, is that many people came here wanting to play and uh, you've taken up all the time? He says, because remember, this is a one horse town. This is, we've got to stop at such and such a time, get on that train and get home, you know, we're, we're all stranded here. So, uh, so John Martin comes up and says, what's happening? He says, I'm just telling this guy, can he go on? I says, because we've got a lot of time. He says, no, we've got like a 10 minute slot. He says, that's for your finale at the end. And then the immortal line, let the cat play, because he's good. Right? Um, and so I did. I got his, so I thanked him and I got the 10 minutes, the finale, the 10 minutes. and. Uh, Apparently, according to the wife, when I went on stage, I came up to the dressing room door and I pushed it open a wee bit and, and he stood there the whole time I was on watching me. And then he, when I was coming off, he shut the door and my bank sat down, you know. Fear, you know what I mean? Fear. <laughs> Competition. So, uh, and that was the John Martin story. The guy who ran the, the centre of the hill came up. And I was talking to John Martin, so he came up and, you know, must have thought I'd do him, you know. And he said, uh, how would you like to play the Centre of the Hell on Sunday? And I said, what about the six weeks booked into the bands now? I said, I forget that, I forget that. He says, Sunday, 20 minute spot, you know. So I did the 20 minute spot at the Centre of the Hell. This was a big, oh, the real deal, this was a big stage. All the coloured spotlights and the big light sign and all that, and a guy at the back with Big desk at that, you know, sound man, you know, I mean, they were well ahead of their time, you know. And uh, so I did the 20 minutes here, and the headliner that night was a guy called Johnny Silvo, who was a coloured guy. I've seen him in the, the Glasgow Folk Centre a few times. He played a lot of sort of kind of razzmatazzy, sort of jazzy sort of numbers. And we backed up a guy, a double bass called uh, Dave Moses. So I did that and I asked him, I, I learned the song off of one of his albums called Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out, right? And I asked him, I said, you going to do that song? And he said, no, I said, well, I think I'll have a shot. He said, I want you to go. So I did that and it's just well done. That was, that was, that was a good shot, you know? So, uh, and that is a John Martin story. Um, and whatever, 
Johnny Robertson, thought of it. I said to people about it. Spread the word, you know. I get let the cap fly everywhere I go, you know. As if it never happened, it was something I made up, you know, but it's a, it's an absolutely true story, you know. And my wife was there the full time and she can verify it, you know. So there you go. So on to part three the interview we're gonna be covering your recording history and that? Aye, we can do that, recording history, aye, that'll be that'll be interesting. Aye, we'll do that, okay. Superb. Yeah, well, see you later, Facebook. See you now.